See you, dude. I don't want to put out your fire. Welcome back to Super Mario Sunshine. That guy's flaming. <sighs> we have a brand new level, Gelato Beach. This level is notorious for two shines in particular. I'd love to go to a beach that's filled with nothing but gelato. Ooh. I actually really like this level. Just the way it looks. A lot of the shines that are in here are simplistic, but they have a nice set piece. I just really like this one, and this is a good... Oh, this is the one with the satellite dish, isn't it? Yep. It's got the dishes. Uh, yeah. It's got the sandbird. It's got the watermelon festival. It's got some really great shines. It's also got the sand dunes. It's also got a pretty good uh, soundtrack, too. A good song going on. Yeah. Everything about this level I really like. Now, some of the shines can be a jerk, but we don't talk about that right now because we're not there yet. Well, what's... Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love that little detail where some of the islanders will actually duck and cover when you spray a sand dune. He looked like the bee mushroom for a second. <laughs> Quick, Mario, grab him! He's a power-up! So, uh, this guy tells you a very helpful hint to that in order to look under something that you can't see, like if the camera accidentally s zooms out and it shows you as a question mark, or any items underneath something that is a question mark, you can actually press the Y button, I believe, whatever he said, to look into third-person view, a closer third-person view, and you'll be able to see what's underneath. Uh-huh. God, that one shot me high. And uh, this also, this level, introduces a very interesting enemy, the Cataquack. Whoa. The blue ones, all they will do is throw you up in the air. And if you spray a sand dune and they happen to walk into it, or you activate it and they get thrown up in the air, they will die completely and drop coins. <laughs> and as you can see, cataquacks, they do have their uses. The red ones, however, do hurt you. The blue ones will only hurt you if you run into them. The red ones will hurt you no matter what. <laughs> Splat. There he goes! All right, uh, this level's very self-explanatory. You just have to spray the right sand dune and hope that the secret shows up. Ooh, blue coin. Hey. Don't want that just yet. <laughs> have you ever heard of the sand portal? It's very interesting. It must not have been a very good, very good foundation. <laughs> yeah, we're actually going to look for that. The sand portal. I... Uh... Ah! Oh, would you look at that? We found it. I mean, that guy's been searching for years, and, I mean, we just sprayed a sand dune, and all of a sudden it appeared. I'd be pissed if I were him. I would be, too, especially if I came in here and had my water jetpack stolen. Why doesn't he ever keep it? You know, I never understood that. He would, he would win, just right then and there, if he just stole Flood. He, 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 yeah, he just steals it and keeps it. You don't get it back after the end of the stage. Actually, they do play around with this idea, but I'll save that for the level we actually go into. That level is really hard, believe it or not. But we'll get to that one a bit later. This level has a nice gimmick to it. It's it's sticking with the beach theme. We have sand blocks. You're hammering that home, huh? Yes. Okay. These sand blocks will eventually disintegrate because they're just little grains of sand. They'll eventually fall apart, but they do come back. Which is really nice, so if you accidentally screw up... It's a great sound we got going on here! <laughs> dude, dude. And I actually love that the sound clips of the sand disintegrating, it actually overlaps a little bit with other sand blocks, so the more you set off, the more it's going to sound <laughs> just like obnoxious sand grating away. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, all we have to do for this secret one is go over to the other side and get the shine. I just wanted to get this one up because it was easily accessible, and... Uh-oh. Boy, I'm glad these sand blocks come back, because it'd be really difficult if they just had blocks that vanish and never come back. Luigi's Purple Coin Challenge, what? <laughs> I would like to think that these secret stages kind of ushered in the idea of the Purple Coin stages, because they're outrageously difficult... And all you have to do is collect things. 
I don't know how many shines I have on Mario Galaxy. I... I'm so happy I was... I'm able to say I 100%ed Mario Galaxy 1, not 2, because green stars. Hmm. Oh, well, there's a giant wiggler on top of that... that well, dang. I feel thing. tempted to... I feel tempted to get Mario Galaxy 2 now just to give it a try, because <laughs> I think I like that one a little better than Galaxy 1. Uh... Galaxy 2 has a lot more levels. It's like the stages that never made it to Galaxy 1. They just took all those ideas and put them all in one game, and it's a lot it's a lot easier to get into, I'd say. Yeah. Woo! All right, our uh, current mission is to get rid of these... these, like, plunger ducks, yeah. or whatever they are. I and don't like the noise they make. Blap, 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 blap. Yeah. I've actually seen a few other playthroughs of this game, and I noticed that this part always stumps people. What you have to do to get these guys off is you need is to that? spray them until they are about to fall off, when they actually have an animation showing that they can't stand up, come over to the opposite side, and then hit it, and then they just go flying off. Is that a solar panel or a satellite dish? That is a solar panel. I'm gonna go with satellite dish. So, so that it's like, we need to get these guys off our satellite dishes, otherwise we can't get, we can't watch the big game. <laughs> you know what? I can kind of see that, but in a tropical resort, do you think there would be giant uh, solar panel slash satellite dishes? The Wi-Fi's down. <laughs> no, that'd be modern Mario Sunshine. <laughs> Uh, imagine that. The same thing, but now with three. Oh, wait, wait. Don't tell me. Is there going to be one where you have to do it with four? <gasps> Actually, no. Believe it or not. No. This is the same Nintendo rule. It's always up to three. And uh, you can actually hit multiple ones off at the same time, but you have to get them in the the correct position. Like, they have to be right next to each other, and then you hit the opposite end, and then both of them will go flying off. Right. So you can't just, like, have them... You can't have one, like, right next to you and then hit it, hoping it'll come off. It Physics don't work like that. That bug is going to catch fire. <laughs> so, know, much, so much solar energy being <laughs> redirected right to it, it's gonna... <laughs> it's gonna fry, you know? You know, I would kind of like that more than the actual outcome of what happens when all three panels shine on the Wiggler. Alright, that's neat. That is really cool. And what I kind of like about the design of this level is they actually take that away and make you learn how to do uh, wall jumps. Ah. All right, we got... That's one way of doing it. Got two panels. We're missing one. Where is it? Oh. Oh, it's only got one because you did it out of order. Whoops. Silly me. All right, let's get rid of this guy and uh, shine the light. So you did it in the order of two, three, one. Twenty-three is number one. Oh, that's from Metroid, right? Uh, well, it's from a Nintendo game. I couldn't tell you which one. Yeah, I, I forgot which one. Something about a tree and a boy and an elf. I don't know. Uh, it sounds really boring, to be honest. I don't think it'll catch on. Nah, nah, nah. nah. See, why do you need to go all the way over? Well, I guess that's a good place to put it. Yeah, it's a familiar area. It's on this little, uh... Are peninsulas the ones with water on three sides? Yes. Okay. It's on this little sandy peninsula. It looks really cool. And, uh, you know what we just did? What did we just did? We pissed off a wiggler. You should go to cable, not satellite! As a result of us... <laughs> shining the solar panels back onto the Wiggler. He fell off and now he is pissed. He's also huge. Hint, hint. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, it's, this is why they were telling you all about the sand dunes and the dune buds. Just to get you to actually use them against Wiggler. Stupid tropical Wigglers. It actually flipped him all the way over, and then you just come up here and hit his different segments, whichever one has the arrow above it. Why does it matter? 
Uh, well, uh, as you actually just saw, I hit the wrong segment and it didn't do a thing, so maybe he's just that weak. Charge! I actually love that Wiggler gets even more angry and the music gets faster and so does he. How many times you gotta hit him? The Nintendo 3. I think it would have been funny if you had hit him like eight times. You have to hit him in every segment, which means you have to time every sand bud to uh, trigger properly to hit him. Which means that by the eighth time, the music's going, like, super fast. Can we get, like, a clip? <laughs> Can we please get a clip of that, please? <laughs> just, just like, this boss music going at, like, 1500 BPM or something. It almost sounds like Flight of the Bumblebee. <laughs> Uh, now he's going ultra super fast. Now he's kind of come over here, dude. Yeah, uh, like a lot of the bosses in here, it's a predetermined path. So really, if you see where he is a lot of the times, you can just stay right here and then, uh, yeah, this fight's over. <laughs> what, what I'm taking you with me! <laughs> <laughs> and... That is the only boss where that happens. Where not only does the music change, depending on what you do, but it, it changes both ways. It goes faster, and then it eventually slows down. I love when games work with their music. Like, it, something in the soundtrack goes with what's on screen. That's always nice. I love that. Me too. Like the instrument, the instrumentation changes, or something in the arrangement changes, something on screen that connects with the soundtrack. It's really cool. It's time to do one of the hardest shines in the game, according to the fan base of Mario Sunshine, the Sandbird. <laughs> every single playthrough I have seen in this game, everybody has trouble with the legendary Sandbird. What kind of a sand? It's a sandbird. If it takes flight, I assume it, I assume it's going at a pretty high speed for to be able to achieve flight. Wouldn't all the sand just fly right off of it? You'd think so, but I uh, mean, is it is, is it like a phoenix going into the ocean or something? I mean, it could be just because it's a legendary sandbird to where it's like an infinite supply of flying sand. I don't know. Hmm. But, uh, the reason people hate this level. It's not hard to get to it, but what you have to do when you get in here. <sighs> you have to fly on the back of the legendary sandbird and collect eight red coins. Good luck. And the reason people have trouble with this... Can't wait for these bloopers. ...is just, uh... The bird, seeing as how he's always in motion, the wind can actually blow you off the back of the bird. If you stand still for too long, you can actually just naturally fall off the sandbird. I thought the blocks went away as you walked on them. No, that would be impossible. Because there is one point in this level, because you notice we're missing a red coin, about halfway through the flight pattern, the entire bird flies on its side. Why? So you need to find a uh, small block just to walk over and just wait as he flies on his side. Not too bad. Of course, seeing as how uh, Mario on a corner of anything can cause him to glitch and fly off, which has happened. Saber's like, get off. But, uh, yeah. As soon as you're done with that halfway point, you just have to wait and, uh, Get to the top of this tower where the eighth red coin is. I want to know where the fucking shine appears. <laughs> I'm not going to like this, am I? No, it's actually right in front of you. Okay. They expect you to get all seven red coins on the back of the sandbird and then show up and be like, oh my gosh, the last one, finally, I can get off the sandbird. And there and it, it goes is. back on the sandbird. Oh, that would be, that would be terrible. You know what else is terrible? <laughs> that didn't happen. Uh -huh. <sighs> so what's the Sandbird's name? Uh, Sand Quattro? <laughs> I don't know. 
Uh, yeah, that wasn't my first take. If it was, I would have been really surprised. But uh, here's an example of what can go wrong on the sandbird. Step one. As soon as you fall off, there is no getting back on it because it is always going upward. You are not. And uh, sometimes you can just get random BS like that. Step two. Another thing that can happen is, like I said, sometimes you can just naturally fall off the sandbird. It was trying to take me down with it, as you saw there. And I think about... Yeah, right here. It's about to... Oh, 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 oh. Bad idea to be on the tail. Very bad idea to be on the tail. Step three. Whoops. Ah, well, as the sandbird. Not as many deaths as I was expecting, but still plenty of silly, easily avoidable deaths. Well, hey, I just gotta say... Sand pun. You did a fine job. Ooh, that was good. Uh, what do you expect? It's par for the course. Man.